What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and I think it's time for a personal rig update. We haven't done one of those since that case came out that I've been using, the NZXT H500i. So uh, let's just build a new PC. So I figured for a nice change of pace every now and then, I'd throw it to kind of like a mix of a vlog style for this video while we go through the build. And the main you know, reason for this is because of that brand new limited Intel i9-9900KS CPU that Intel sent out for this video. And there's nothing really wrong with my old PC, but the hardware is going on over three years at this point. It's still got an i7-8700K, um, a 1080 Ti. So it's, you know, it's been great for what it's been for gaming and editing over the past three years. But like I said, it's time to get a bit of a refresh, you know, updated components and hardware. So brand new CPU, brand new cooler, brand new graphics card, motherboard, and a brand new case. Finally switching it up from, let's see, I've been using an NZXT case since 2013, I want to say. So this is going to be a nice change of pace, just something new and refreshing. So for our case, we're going with the Fantex Enthu Evolve X. This is tempered glass and the silver finish here, and I just think it looks super clean and minimal. Just uh, a really nice looking case. Plus, once you get it powered on, it has these embedded RGB lights and stuff. Um, it is just, I think, one of the nicest cases out there, personally. Now, starting off with the build for the CPU. So the main thing with this is that it's a slight upgrade from the regular 9900K. And the fact that this is binned and you are guaranteed to hit five gigahertz on all cores. And that's, you know, gonna be an upgrade from the original because through the silicone lottery, you know, not all of the original 9900Ks could successfully be overclocked to five gigahertz. So this you're pretty much guaranteed. So for those into overclocking and stuff, this is gonna be the better option if you're gonna be able to take advantage of that. But at least now it's nice that we have that option to overclock stably to the five gigahertz on all the cores. And again, since it's gonna be my main um, editing and gaming rig for the channel, that could always come in hand. Now, keeping that cool is going to be our AIO, the Deep Cool Castle 360 EX. I've been using Deep Castle coolers for a long time now, never had an issue. But what I really like about this one in particular is the actual well, cooler itself has this sort of like two way mirror for it, so it's kind of reflective. And then behind it, you can get these like little personalized pieces for a logo. So when it's all powered on and the RGB light is shining, you can have a logo there. So I have mine custom made. And uh, once that's in, it should look pretty cool. Again, more of a personal touch to the build. That's all gonna be going on our motherboard, the ASUS RG Maximus 11 formula. All right, so while I was getting this put together and stuff, it was pretty much half built at this point, um, there was just too much black brushed metal on the motherboard. But I really like the chrome accents, so I figured, you know, what's more personal than completely customizing the motherboard? Let's make this white and chrome. I uh, painstakingly took like an hour to measure everything and I carefully marked off anything that would be potentially dangerous if it came in contact with the plastic dip. I even have like cardboard and stuff under some parts to protect it from the CPU sockets and stuff. So I covered everything that was not brushed metal because I want the black brushed metal to be the white but still have those chrome accents. All right, so it's the next morning now. Last night, after I let the motherboard dry for a few hours, I then just started to build it up because the whole building process wouldn't be fun for you guys. But for the most part, the motherboard came out 95% on par of what I was expecting. Um, I actually used this white plastic dip. So with this, it's different in spray paint in the sense that it's not just like being, I don't know, painted on there. This is like a very thin rubber coating. So if I ever wanted to, I could always just peel that all off, which also made it a lot easier when it came to like cleaning some rough edges up and stuff like that. But you'll see it's in a more, you know, better light as the build goes on. Now getting into some of the rest of the hardware, I'm gonna be reusing the 32 gigs of Corsair Vengeance Pro RGB RAM that I have in my current build. Since that one's not gonna be in use anymore, figured I could just use that in here because it looks awesome with the white and RGB. And it'll fit in perfectly with the motherboard and the other white accents. 
Then for like hard drives, my boot drive, I have a Sabrent Rocket NVMe, and that is one terabyte of space. That's gonna be my main boot drive, essentially. It did come with its own heat sink that is black and rose gold. Um, unfortunately, that visually won't look right in here, so I'm just gonna use the, uh, the the shield cover and stuff pretty much for inside the Asus motherboard. And I also have a few other terabytes of regular SSDs lying around that I could use for this because SSDs are so cheap. Figured why not, you know, load it up with the spare ones I had. And then the last piece, the main upgrade, the Strix RTX 2080 Ti graphics card from Asus. Now, in my previous build, I got tons of questions and people saying, well, why didn't you vertically mount it? That's the new trend. Do that. It looks so much better. Blah, 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 blah. So I figured for this, we'll vertically mount this. I know in some cases, temps aren't ideal when you do that. However, since this is going to be facing the tempered glass towards me, you know we got to give it the white treatment. So, uh, Plasti Dip Part 2. All right, so that was very simple. Didn't even have to unscrew the fans that I did. It was just these three pieces on the, uh, like where the fans sit, and then these three screws on the side, unplugged the RGB lighting cable there, and then I took out those little uh, plastic like tubes that go underneath, which kind of illuminate the RGB. So I took those out, and now we just have the, uh, the plain black shroud, which we can very easily spray paint or plastic dip. Okay, so it's been quite the day. Finally got the GPU uh, cover for it all dried and stuff. It's been a few hours. Went ahead and assembled it. I've also am filming two videos at the same time alongside of this. So it's been definitely hectic in here, uh, but I just got it all connected. Hopefully I can press the on button and everything will work. Let's see, which one would it be up here? I guess this main one. Oh, baby. All right, awesome. So that is a good sign. Um, not only is everything powering up, but I was concerned about the all the digital fan frames I have on there. I have four of them total, plus. Uh, that's not a problem. I don't have anything hooked up yet. It's going through. Yeah, it's going through its cycles. But I had all of those. Uh, so that's four different RGB, you know, uh, things, accessories, whatever. Plus the Deep Cool Captain RGB cable. And I just wanted to make sure that they were all gonna, you know, power on properly. So I had them all daisy chained. I didn't know if I missed anything. But the fact that all booted up and they're all on is a good sign and then I could, you know, change them so they're not the rainbow and stuff but to make them, you know, blue or white or whatever. All right. And while we're at it, since I have the front panel on now, uh, what I didn't show before was the RGB lights that are automatically connected on the front panel to give it some extra glow. So let me turn it on and boom, there they are too. Uh, one of these buttons probably look it up before I start just pressing things but one of these controls all of that so I'll figure that out later let's get it over to the desk So guess it doesn't have a Windows 10 boot drive on hand, me. And that's gonna take a while to download and set up and then get everything set up through here. So I think for today, I'm going to end it at this and I can do a follow-up video uh, going over, you know, more in-depth stuff on the actual color sync and just, you know, how much better it performs than my old PC and stuff. And I also wanted to show off and install the Fantex neon RGB light tubes. These are kind of like light strips, but it's this, as you can see, um, I, don't even, I don't even know how to describe it, but it's gonna give brighter, more even lighting. I wanted to install those, but I forgot to do all this stuff first. So like I said, for part two, if you wanna see you know, a more finished build once everything is all installed and booted up, let me know. Um, but it's been a hell of a day getting everything set up and dried and installed and I think it just looks really nice the the paint job on the, on the motherboard with the white and chrome and you mix in the white 
on the graphics card and stuff. You still have the RGB coming through. And I'm not going to, you know, keep it the rainbow effect going on. We're going to keep it like blue and white or something like that. Just to make it, you know, more my style and stuff. But hope you guys dig it. Like I said, let me know down below if you want to see a part two on the follow up and all that stuff about this PC. And uh, hit that thumbs up button while you're at it. All right. All right. Well, I'm Random Frank P. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.